I love the vibe that I get from anything that James Gunn directs, that he creates like an onset family. But when it comes to a Marvel movie, I have to imagine it's like a little intimidating to jump into a project like that. So do you each remember the first time you kind of like felt part of the family, whether it was because something he did or someone did on set to make you feel supported and like part of the team or something you reached in your character that made it feel like the perfect fit? I remember actually Lee Pace on the first movie organized a night for everyone to get together at where he was staying. And that sort of made me feel part of things. But when we got there, it was Peter Jackson's house. Oh, really? So, so we were like, whoa. And then we got to watch a movie in his theater and we watched the After Hours, Scorsese movie. Oh, that's great. But that was nice because it felt like I had been invited and included because my character was a little bit on the sidelines, and, but they were nice enough to extend an invite. Um, I remember the when, when I first met um, all the guardians was at, at the table read, and I was a, a little bit like anxious because I was like the the newbie, you know. But they made me feel uh, really welcome and at ease, and they were mm -hmm. so sweet, you know. And then I remember um, hanging with you for the first time. We had drinks, and then oh, we yeah. went to sing karaoke. Or <gasps> like, yes. was it the same night? I don't yeah. know, but we had like a lot of fun together. Yeah, we sang a live band karaoke where you can oh. like get a rock band, and we sang Nirvana. <laughs> Solid we're like right yelling there. in the microphone. Yeah, we're like really going for it. it. <laughs> they introduced us as the girls from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, but no one knew who I was. So it was yeah, so funny. I don't know who I was because I'm blue. <laughs> so they were like, who are these actors claiming to be Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> <laughs> Little do they know after all these films and such strong arcs and evolutions. I'll actually go there next. The Karen, because Nebula's uh, arc throughout these three films is one of my favorite parts of them. So looking back, is there any scene from Guardians 1 or 2 that you found kind of redefining or reshaping the character most, where you could feel everything you do in Guardians 3 being influenced by that scene. I would say like a breakthrough scene for Nebula was when she talks to Gamora or has a sort of um, shouting match with Gamora where she tells her she just wanted a sister. And that kind of really encompassed the character for me and all of her torment and how all of this anger was just because she wanted her family. Um, and so that kind of evolved their relationship and, and evolved Gamora's understanding of where Nebula was coming from, which then allowed them to progress from there. Still to this day, one of my favorite scenes in this trilogy and like oh. just in the MCU in yeah, general, I think as someone who has a sister and, you know, oh, we yeah. grew up butting heads a lot. Something like that means a lot to see yeah, on screen. Palm for you, one of my favorite new additions for Mantis is that she and Peter are really embracing the brother and sister idea. And everyone knows that now from the holiday special. So what's something about your approach to the character and the way she carries herself that changes now that she knows she has a brother who also wants to call her his sister? Oh yeah, I mean, it was it was beautiful, you know? It was like a beautiful bond and um I don't know. For, for for me, also, it just like brings me back to uh, to my personal story too. I had a brother, so you know, it was like beautiful to to shoot these scenes, and uh, it was really cathartic for some, you know, in in some ways. I love the family elements of this. Um, I also love how how uh, Nebula is kind of growing as a as a leader and emerging as a real force in the group. So when you're tackling that part of the character, a two-parter on this, what is something that you wanted her to have as a leader that set her apart from the other emerging leaders in the group? But then also, what is something that you wanted her to have as a leader that reflected the fact that, you know, she now understands that she's part of a family and a team and needs to respect what they all want? I mean, it was it's always been interesting to me that she would become this kind of caretaker leader role because, you know, she's been on a healing journey throughout all of these films. And I think like a massive part of healing is helping other people to heal at a certain point. Like you can use your expertise actually in this area that you've gone through and come out the other end and help other people to go on that journey. So I, I like that she would probably have that as a leader. I love that so much. Here's my new favorite question. It is overly sentimental. I don't care. It makes me happy. <laughs> so in this industry, we love to give each other awards and that's wonderful, but I feel like nobody here says good job to themselves nearly enough. So whether it's a scene in Guardians 3 or any other Marvel movie you've made, what's a scene you can look back on and say to yourself, damn, I am proud of what I did there. Oh, oh my God. Um, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, there's like some scenes, you, you when you watch them on big screen, and when you shoot them, it's, it's a different things. And then you watch them with like, the beauty of the music and the other yeah. actors or the special effects and everything, it's just like, 
you know, it all makes sense and it's, it feels like magic and it's the, the movie magic, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's like, oh, that's what it was. And now it all makes sense and it's beautiful. So I don't know, there's like a scene that uh, in this movie with the obelisks. I was going to choose that for you. That like, I, yeah. I don't know. It's like, it's, it's, I don't know. I think it's, it's a beautiful scene. She's and so I'm, good in that you know, moment. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't even say anything, but you say so much without speaking like oh it's so good oh thank you uh what about you <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, i don't know so many amazing scenes i mean one scene that i really like i don't think that it's down to me that it's so good it's the whole thing but the scene that i really like is when i'm with craglin and i'm sort of talking about how i'm going to tear thanos apart like a dog and then he like has the necklace line that's really funny and i just always really like that moment. oh that was so funny oh, yeah i like both of those examples i mean you kind of cheated and gave everybody else some love here and not just yourself yeah, but well, yeah. Yeah, and, like full narcissism. But I, in, I, in this I movie, like, like the, the scene like with the car when you're trying to open the car, oh, it's so the funny, car. it's so good. Oh, the comedy in that <laughs> is on, that. on, on so point, so on funny. point. The perfect, the perfect place to drop the MCU's first F-bomb because yeah. I feel like everybody oh, understands that kind of frustration. Yeah, it's so funny that they would use it. it. Like it's, It feels like a monumental thing and it is used in the most throwaway setting. Did it feel like a monumental thing on set where everyone no. was thinking about planting it there? With no, purpose? I didn't notice that he said it until someone said, "Oh, that's the first f bomb in, in MCU history," and I was like, "Really? I didn't I didn't actually even hear it because I guess I'm Scottish and hear a lot." I mean, swearing the thing set. is, like, also, why is it a thing in the first place? I mean, we both come from Europe too, so for I mean, for me, it's like you say it I say like this, this. I use this word all the time. Yeah, and you need a release, so it should be in the movies too. Yeah, but it's great that it's in this movie. We're proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> As you should Part be. It that. reflects yes. the way that I speak when I'm not sitting in these interviews where I can't do all those bad words. I always, I always <laughs> ask if I can say the word to in the movies and they always say no. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Mantis's day will come. You should, that would you be should, really funny. If Mantis. you could have Mantis utter, a, I'll let you say it right here. I haven't dropped a single F-bomb or anything. If you could have Mantis utter a bad word in a future Marvel series or movie, what would it be? <gasps> oh my God. We we tried a lot of different words on set, and then he chose. What was it like the nut thing? It was so funny. What nut thing? <laughs> like what? something with like nuts, the zard nuts. <laughs> no, I, I would I, I would just say uh, something in French. Okay. What would you say? Merde. Merde. What does that mean? It means shit. Shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try to say that in another interview now and not get in trouble because it's not in English. Um, but before I have to leave you, I just love hearing people sing James's praises and what he's done with the series is really something special. So can you name a time on set when, you know, workshopping you did with James or a note he gave you had you, you know, access something in your own character or reprocess in a scene that made all the difference? Well, I mean, he sort of famously gave me a note that unlocked the whole character for me which I feel like I've maybe already talked about this. I don't know. So stop me if I have. Um, where I was kind of doing my generic villain thing and he was like, stop all of this and let's try an impression of Marilyn Monroe and Clint Eastwood. And that just unlocked the whole character for me. Now I have a voice like that. Yeah, so good. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's like a specific moment. It's just, um, I don't remember. <laughs> No, it's like I know that sometimes I overthink or like I'm like, you know, and he just like he just like calms me in some ways, you know. So he finds the right words to just make me feel like you know, and you know, there's like so much trust that and then, you know, you just let go and and it happens, you know? He is like a different director to each of us. I get a different yeah. James Palm gets it because he knows that every person needs something different. Um, and it's incredible to watch. Such a beautiful quality to have. Now I wish I had more time so I could follow up and ask what, what your version of James was for everybody. Um, thank you for your time today. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations.